This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the world of corporate governance, shall we? Uh, it's not a massive topic within the syllabus. You're only going to get a handful of questions like that, maybe one or two. Uh, they're unlikely, unlikely they're not going to be numerical. Though there's no numerical aspect to looking at corporate governance. So it should be quite an OK topic come the exam. OK, uh, we're just going to cover the essentials and the fundamentals and make sure that you're happy with them. Uh, it's a bit of a chat between you and I about what corporate governance is and how to approach it uh, and then just hammer away at the questions. I don't even think there's all that many objective test questions within the question banks covering corporate governance. But there we go. Let's not worry about that, shall we? So what is corporate governance? Well, it's quite literal, isn't it? It's the governance. So how things are run within a corporation, within a business. So essentially, it's looking at how a business is run with regards to how it is directed and how it is controlled and essentially putting in place practices that ensure that the shareholders can be comfortable with how their business that they own is being run. So that the systems, the processes, the controls that are in place are appropriate. Not only are they appropriate, but they are updated, they are monitored. And if there are issues, then that issue is addressed and therefore corrected. OK, it's become very, 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 very prominent over recent years. OK, there's been lots and lots of corporate scandals that have happened that have brought corporate governance to everybody's attention. OK, if you have a look up there, you can see some, can't you? OK, uh, some of them you may be aware of. So in the UK, you may have heard more about the cooperative group. Uh, but the others, I think Emron, Worldcom, maybe they're a bit too old for yourselves, depending upon how old you are. OK, uh, they were there at the, the start of the century, weren't they? Uh, but then you've got more recent ones, such as the Volkswagen Group. OK, and they've had scandals that, that have brought to attention the way that business is run. That business was run, if you like, ineffectively. Uh, people were operating within the business to try and defraud. Uh, the business in some way, shape or form. And therefore, that has, has caused all sorts of issues. OK, uh, we'll just talk about each of them briefly. Feel free to go through and do your own bits of investigation and, and working it through. But, you know, Enron, uh, anybody know what, what the big issue was with Enron? Has anybody seen the film? There is a film about Enron. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. OK, uh, it was also a stage show uh, in, 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 in theatre. OK. Uh, but the company, what was the problem? Uh, the issue that it was, was that Enron had billions and billions of dollars worth of debts. OK, it meant entered into all sorts of deals that it had funded via debt finance. Uh, and this debt finance was essentially hidden. OK, uh, you may hear the words off balance sheet finance. There was a lot of off balance sheet finance that was used so that there was debt within the business, but it wasn't seen in the financial statements. And the executives in Enron uh, misled the board. Uh, they misled the audit committee. And when the auditors finally discovered this off balance sheet debt, ooh, ouch, billions of pounds worth of debt was brought onto the financial statements. And Enron was not really able to go through there and pay it. And that led to all sorts of financial irregularity and, and Enron ceased to exist. OK. Uh, Worldcom uh, wasn't too long after Enron. Uh, what happened there with Worldcom uh, is that they, again, the CEO, the CFO, uh, were involved in accounting bad practice. Uh, they tried to overinflate the revenues. Uh, they also tried to record revenue expenditure as capital expenditure. So poor corporate governance, but also ethical issues as well. And we'll, you know, we, we, we've seen a little bit about ethics already. You know, corporate governance revolves, doesn't it, around ethics. In order to adopt good principles of corporate governance, you need to ensure that the directors, the executives are all ethically responsible, don't we? But Worldcom, uh, again, overinflated its revenue, so its profits weren't as good as what they actually were reporting. Uh, they capitalised stuff that should have been expensed. So everybody believed that 
Emrom, or sorry, Worldcom was performing really well when it wasn't. Okay, and again, when this came to light, uh, Worldcom just imploded upon itself. Okay, uh, the cooperative group. Yeah, some of you looking at me down the camera there, going, I have no idea. Uh, it's a UK based company uh, or a cooperative. Uh, and the problem that they had there is that the bank's chairman, so the cooperative does all sorts of things. It does funeral care, it does pharmacies. One of the big aspects that, that it was involved in was banking. And the issue that they had is that the chairman that they put in place was not suitably qualified. Uh, he was also involved in, in public scandals. Okay, uh, The public scandals, although nothing really, I don't think, was done illegally, although it's not illegal, uh, to be not suitably qualified it just stinks of poor corporate governance doesn't it now if you think about banks and how they operate do you know how banks operate they're complicated entities aren't they in terms of how they operate on a day-to-day -day business and the chairman the person with the overall responsibility of looking over this business had no experience of banking whatsoever okay I think some of his previous experience was in the church. OK, so, yeah, uh, not the right person, I suppose, to go through there and be in charge overall of the cooperative. And again, the bank got into financial difficulty and had to be bailed out. OK, uh, Volkswagen, probably one of the more recent corporate scandals that you may be aware of. Uh, what was all that about? What, what did Volkswagen do? This is a little bit different, I suppose, to Enron and WorldCom, whereby there were financial irregularities. With Volkswagen, it wasn't so much about financial regularities, was it? It was more to do with, yeah, the emissions, wasn't it? They they manipulated the tests or falsified the results of tests of emissions of their cars, stating that it was not as polluting a vehicle as what it actually was. OK, uh, again, that's morally wrong, isn't it? OK, people were going through buying the cars thinking that they were buying an environmentally friendlier car than, than other brands when essentially they weren't, okay? And the scandal is going on and on and on. Uh, and Volkswagen could be in quite a lot uh, of difficulty when it comes to paying the fines that are likely to be implemented by various jurisdictions around the world. I think America is one of the key jurisdictions that is looking to, to, to sue Volkswagen for considerable amounts of money, okay? Uh, all of the above scandals, as it says, came about due to inappropriate corporate governance in place. So that begs the question, what is appropriate corporate governance? That There's no set rules depending upon the jurisdiction that you're involved with. But for appropriate corporate governance to be in place, what we would expect, first of all, at least, is transparency. OK, so by that we want, if you like, open and clear disclosure. So uh, Volkswagen weren't transparent, were they? Or at least the executives that were involved in the emissions were not being transparent about what was actually happening there within the business. Likewise, as well, we want to ensure independence uh, so by independence we're wanting to make sure that people run direct control of the business whereby there is no influence of any others uh, the directors of Worldcom weren't really being independent were they that they were they had their own influences at heart didn't they trying to manipulate the profits because if they manipulated the profits they probably got paid considerable bonuses okay uh, likewise as well uh, good principles of corporate governance will involve accountability uh, so what should happen there is that if you are making decisions you should be answerable to those actions uh, you know, in terms of the director or the chairman, I should say, at the cooperative, that they weren't very accountable. They were making decisions and they weren't being answerable to the actions that they were taking. OK, if they had been answerable to the actions, uh, if there'd been an appropriate individual in place, then 
the issues may not have arisen or they would have been identified earlier and could have been dealt with earlier before the problems escalated further. And then what we want as well is people to operate with integrity. Okay. You would think that that should be a given, shouldn't it? And that everybody operates with integrity is being honest. But there's always a little imp on your shoulder, isn't there? Uh, trying to get you to be dishonest and act with a lack of integrity. Hopefully that shouldn't be the case. Uh, but it's always there lurking within the background, isn't it? OK, so again, just be aware of those principles of good corporate governance. OK, uh, learn them might be useful. Uh, and then just to go through, finish off the bits and pieces within this short but enjoyable, informative chapter. It's nice when we talk about things that are real world, aren't they? OK, in some of the tax stuff later on, there's a lot of rules and it's quite dry. You know, this, there's no rules and it's a, it's a chatty element, isn't it? It's quite enjoyable. Uh, real word, it's interesting. OK, uh, so in terms of the approach to corporate governance, we, we've talked about transparency, independence, accountability, integrity. Uh, it was on the previous page, wasn't it? The previous slide. Uh, but there are different approaches adopted by different jurisdictions. OK, uh, what you can have there is a very principles based code or a very rules based code. Uh, rules based tends to be the US style of corporate governance uh, because that goes through there and looks at things being measurable. OK, so targets will be set if the targets are not met. You need to be accountable for why that target was not met. OK, likewise as well, uh, the. The way of operating in America, uh, it, it, the culture, isn't it? It is all about suing okay, and counter suing. Uh, very litigious culture, isn't it? So there, if you have a rules based method of corporate governance, then the letter of the law can be applied, can't it? And therefore, if it is broken, uh, then people will be held responsible, won't they? Uh, and potential legal proceedings there. So it maybe makes things a little bit more rigorous but the application of those rules can be quite a challenge can't it and sometimes it becomes a little bit monotonous in terms of filling out paperwork etc and, and it takes away time from the core aspect of your role which is to to run the business on behalf of the shareholders and, and increase profitability and wealth okay uh principles gives you if you like a, a, a set of ideas okay uh, and instead of setting targets it just goes through there, doesn't it? And doesn't focus on the rules, but goes through there and gives you objectives that you can try and think about. It doesn't say you necessarily have to meet them, OK, but they are just guidelines. OK, and if you follow those guidelines, then that should then go through and allow you to adopt a good approach to corporate governance. OK, there's no hard and fast rule. So it tends to be adopted in a lot of other countries. We adopt the principles based in the UK. Uh, a lot of EU countries have a principles based focus uh, in terms of corporate governance. And that's good. It, it's better, particularly in the EU, because then that can operate across different jurisdictions. OK, if you have a rules based corporate governance process, it's very difficult then to take that from, say, the US and apply it in, in, in another country whereby there is a different legal jurisdiction, OK, uh, because it's not here uh, focused on the rules. It makes it easier to apply, doesn't it? OK, uh, and what I like about it is it says at the bottom, you know, is the emphasis is on investors making up their own minds. OK, so you've got these set of principles. The CEO, the CFO, the chairman ha have followed these principles. It's then your decision as a shareholder to turn around and say, well, have these principles been upheld? OK, if they haven't, then we can do something about it, can't we? OK, so it's a little bit more subjective, isn't it? OK, allows you to use a little bit more, shall we say, common sense uh, and thoughts. Uh, I think that then makes it better, if you like, to apply and better to observe and then judge. OK, uh, but just be aware. Uh, again, I think I've spoken about it already. Uh, it just talks about the, the corporate governance in different markets. So the UK, it's a very voluntary code based upon principles. OK, 
uh, whereby the US has a very rule based approach as it is a very litigious culture, isn't it? So if you are seen to be breaking the rules, then you can be sued if you are breaking them. Uh, and therefore, uh, that might make you work that little bit harder so that you do not get sued because you may be accountable for that position within the business. OK, uh, there we go. Uh, that, that's corporate governance. Uh, I think the key thing that you need to have an awareness of it is the two different types of principle based and rules based. Uh, you also need to know about which jurisdictions apply which type of corporate governance and don't forget the, the the good practice of corporate governance is transparency independence accountability and integrity you shouldn't get any really difficult questions on corporate governance within the exam